The mobile service table interface exposes a set of methods which are used to perform basic CRUD operations. That's create, read, update, and delete on that server data. And as you know, these methods are internally mapped to HTTP requests sent to the server, which, where they are then mapped to SQL statements on the server side. So let's look at some examples of using these methods. Now first, we can add new records to the table through the insert async method. This takes a DTO object to insert, and this DTO must have an ID property. And notice that it's async. All Azure service calls are asynchronous in nature because, well, we're talking to a web service. And never forget this is a network operation. Now the await completes when the server side is finished and returns the JSON response. And the system fields are filled out by the server side and returned once that operation is completed successfully, i.e. the ID will be filled in once that operation completes. Now notice that we've also wrapped the call in a try catch. This is also important. The operation could fail for a variety of reasons, and this error will be turned into an exception. Now update and delete are similar to insert, except for the operation that they perform. And notice the syntax and that usage is pretty much identical. And finally, we come to retrieving data. And this is probably the most common operation. And as a result, it has several ways that it can be performed. Now the first approach that we can do is to retrieve all the records from the server. And this is done with a read async method. And this is really equivalent to a select star. And this returns an enumerable collection of our data transfer objects, our DTOs. And alternatively, we can scope our result to a single record using the lookup async method. This takes an ID to retrieve and then returns that single record. Now these two operations represent an all or single record approach, which works for some scenarios. But what if we want more than one record, but not all the records? So for example, let's say we call read async. This causes the server to do a select star from the database. The server retrieves, say, a thousand records from the database. This allocates a big JSON block and passes it back to the client. Now, the client has to iterate through the data and display a subset. We'll say maybe 10, 10 records. And this is a really bad use of resources. So not only will it take a lot more time to complete, but we're wasting memory, we're wasting network resources and database time. So instead, we want to push that filtering up to the server, which is really where it belongs. So in this model, the client would somehow provide a filter as part of the query to read, say, 10 records. And then the server would use that filter in the database query that it issues on the server side. The database server would return just the 10 records. The server would package that up, just that subset, into JSON and return it to the client, which would then display the records without having to filter on the client side. Now the secret to this query filtering is the OData specification. Now recall that we said that Azure Service implements an OData endpoint to front end our database. Now OData is a standardized data query language and it's intended for web services. Now the Azure Mobile Service supports a subset of the OData v3 specification and the client passes these as part of the query string to retrieve the data. Now the iMobile service table interface has a set of methods to create a query. And that query is represented in another interface, iMobile service table query. The query method provides for standard querying filters such as where, order by, skip and take. And notice that each query function returns the query. This allows for a fluent syntax. And in addition, the method names conform to the link standard. And this means you can use the link query language to construct these queries. Now, before we dive into the query usage, we have one more thing we should talk about. The query itself represents an expression which can be passed to the server to execute. However, creating a query does not execute it directly. Instead, once you've constructed that query, you must send it to the server. And this is typically done through one of four methods. Now, let's start with the most common query style, the WHERE clause. Now this allows you to filter your query to a subset of records based on a past condition. And the condition is a C-sharp expression which supplies simple evaluations which will be done by the server. So uh, equality operators greater than, less than, uh, contains. And 
In addition, there are a few modifiers you can supply to the query. So for example, to upper and to lower can be used to force a you know, case insensitive query. So here we have a query being created, which will restrict our records to the ones which contain the word secret. Now, when we send this query to the server, it will add a filter expression to the get statement, which the server will turn into a where clause that it then passes to the SQL server. And this filter is a standard O data keyword, as is substring of and to lower operators. Now, notice that the end of our query is a two enumerable async. This is what actually processes the query and sends it to the server. So another common desire, if you will, is to restrict the return data. So not by filtering, but by the columns. And this is accomplished with the select statement. And this creates a projection of the data. So uh, much like the where clause, the select statement is somewhat limited compared to link to objects. So it can only contain columns known to the server and other elements are either performed on the client side, if that's possible, or generate a runtime error, unfortunately. Now, when this is executed on the server, it will generate a select query parameter for the server to process. And this will in turn restrict the generated SQL select statement. Now notice, that the to upper is not supported. Instead, this portion of the query will be done on the client side. Now, this API is fluent. You can create a query, cache it off, and then modify or add to it with additional methods. And each method returns a new altered query. So in this case, we make three different queries, all skip five and first two. Now remember, it doesn't actually execute until you enumerate it with one of the async methods. And when we execute the final query, first two, all the prior queries are captured in the send request. Now, as mentioned earlier, you can also use the link syntax. And this is the language specific syntax, which looks very similar to SQL. And these two code blocks will generate exactly the same query and there's no difference in the performance or execution. The only difference is the preferred syntax. So use the one you like. Now delete is an interesting operation when dealing with cloud-based databases. It's destructive in that it removes records from the shared data source, which can affect other clients working with the data. So it needs to be treated specially to ensure that it's propagated to each client connected to the server. Now, there are two ways to deal with this, and Azure supports both approaches. One, just delete the record and report errors to clients who think the record is still there, or use a soft delete model. And this is where records are never actually deleted, but are instead marked. They're basically, they're indicated that they're no longer present, but they're still actually stored in the database. Now, that's the purpose of the deleted flag we saw earlier in the JSON. This is a column on every table exposed by a mobile app service. The field is always present, uh, regardless of whether soft delete is supported, and it will be false if soft delete is not supported. And this soft delete approach is a requirement to really robustly support offline synchronization. And the server decides on a table by table basis whether to turn on soft delete, and the client can't control this. Now, when soft delete is supported by the server, the client can use two other features exposed by the client SDK. Now, first, you can see deleted records. Now, these aren't returned by default, but you can add the include deleted flag to your query to include records where that deleted flag is set to true. And now, second, you can undelete records, and this restores them to live data. Now, this is done by retrieving a deleted record and then passing it to the undelete async method. And you can actually call this on live records too, but it, it just won't do anything. Now, finally, Almost all the table methods have multiple signatures. The second version supports dictionary as input, and this dictionary is used to send additional parameters to the HTTP query in the form of key value pairs. Now, this is useful if you're using the ASP.NET backend and are looking for some additional data to be passed. So for example, uh, the deleted option simply adds the URL parameter uh, double underscore include deleted equals true to the query. 